On warm nights, I sleep on top of my pickup, and I have done so for almost five years. I realize there might be some people out there who think that odd behavior. But I have long ago ceased caring what people think of my behavior. I sleep on top of my pickup with a blanket under me, a blanket over me, and a pillow under my head. And of course, a convenient snack food at hand in case I get hungry. I don't even have to worry about cracker crumbs in my bed. The chickens peck them out during daylight hours. There are three reasons why I sleep on top of my pickup at night. The first is because the bunkhouse here at the ranch is way too hot to sleep in at night. The second is so that I can see the stars. The third is so I can wish upon those falling stars, currently the Perseid meteor shower. Seems to me that the science of modern astronomy has been the only human endeavor that has revealed to humanity just what our role is in the universe. That role is, apparently, that of an insignificant observer living in a cosmic wilderness. That is comforting knowledge. With all of our faults and flaws, it is good to know that all of our strengths and noble accomplishments were well earned. Our limitless character defects makes our accomplishments all that more precious. Yet there are forces of darkness and ignorance in the world who would cheerfully destroy our achievements if they could and return us to a time of savage superstition, stupidity, and fear. With their backs to the sunrise, they worship the past. The sun is 150 million kilometers far away from the earth. I do not think there would be any energy left until the sun's ray reached the earth. The energy of sunlight and starlight is not constrained by its distance. It is constrained by its frequency, that is, its wavelength, and the number of photons striking a surface such as Earth. Here on Earth, that energy is on average about 960 joules per square meter. That is why a photovoltaic panel, one meter square, with a nominal efficiency of about 14%, will yield about 134 watts. This panel I show here is half a square meter and it therefore yields about 67 watts. It is impossible that light could carry heat. All beings with functional brains know sunlight carries heat. How hot it is depends upon the distance between sun and earth. It does not depend upon the brightness of the sun's rays. How hot it is depends on the number of photons striking a surface, such as Earth, and the angle at which those photons strike the surface. That is why summer is hotter than winter. The sun's rays are acute during summer and obtuse during winter. I made a video on the subject a year ago. The sun consists of 90% of hydrogen and 9% of helium, gas which is burning. The sun does not burn its fuel. Stars do not burn. They fuse hydrogen and the lighter elements into heavier elements. This isn't possible because there is no oxygen in space, which is essential for combustion. If there would be oxygen, the sun would explode immediately. If not, it would not burn. The sun does not undergo combustion. Stars do not undergo combustion. Therefore, oxygen is not used for stars to create their heat. If it, the sun, would not have a casing, a wrapper, it would expand at all sides because gases expand when they become heated. <sighs> Gravity constrains stars, keeping them from dissipating their gases. Gravity is also why stars fuse hydrogen. Why isn't the sky lighted at night? The further light spreads, the weaker it becomes. Something, it should not be dark in the universe. Photons do not weaken with distance. The number of photons that strike a surface decreases in ratio to the distance photons travel. The farther away the source, the fewer photons. 
When a photon strikes a surface, it often discharges an electron. That is why we observe the photoelectric effect, and we have been observing the photoelectric effect since the late 1800s. When a photon strikes a surface, it also converts itself into an infrared wave. That is why sunlight is hot. Infrared is heat. Infrared created by photons, carried by photons from infrared sources such as the sun. There needs to be no intervening media to transport those photons. They transport themselves perfectly fine through vacuum of space at a uh, constant rate, the speed of light. Of course, the speed of light is different when it travels through a medium such as water or atmosphere. All of this was worked out by Albert Einstein in the year 1905, 103 years ago, for which he got, of course, the Nobel Prize in Physics in the year 1921. Sadly, there are still people in the world who believe none of these facts, or they just claim they don't believe it because they want to be seen as rebel morons. <laughs>